Greetings, heathens and heretics, and welcome to another episode of In the Abyss. Uh, with me, as usual, Voice of Reason and uh, the, the Saudi Queen, still with us. Um, it's a special one this week, and that's not because we've reached down the back of the sofa and dragged Bean out again. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've got CJ Wildheart with us this week, which for us is a, is a, is a huge deal. And CJ, welcome to the podcast, and thank you so much for taking out your Friday night and joining us. Hey, thank you, thank you for having me. Um, I didn't even realise it was a Friday night, to be honest with you. Fucking, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah. Or, yeah, I was falling asleep on the sofa this afternoon, so you know, oh. it's definitely sort of towards the end of the week. But um, yeah. but look, we've um, we've got you on here to talk about the new record, Split, the most important thing. Um, congrats on that, by the way. It's a great album. We're all loving it. We're, thank you, know, you very much enjoying it. Um, let's get straight into it. Tell us a little bit about it. Um, you know what it's all about, concepts behind it, anything like that. Give us the gist. Well, I um, obviously from my name, CJ Wildheart, I, I had a band called The Wild Heart. So I started with the singer Ginger back in 1989, 34 years ago. Yeah. And um, uh, we've made many albums, had many falling outs, um, mm-hmm. many ups, many lows. <laughs> Many like, you know, sideway moments as well. But um, it's well documented and everyone knows we're, you know, a a truly dysfunctional rock and roll band. And um, I'm no longer working with the Wild Hearts. Um, I believe Ginger's trying to resurrect a band with different members. But um, I've always had a like other bands and a solo sort of project that's run alongside the Wild Hearts and splits, I think, my eighth solo album. And I work on my own. I record these albums on my own. And then I get a a friend, a good friend of mine called Jason Boll to replace the drum machine parts. And he plays in a band called Bullet From A Valentine. And he's played on my last six solo albums. And and then I mix with another friend of mine, Dave Draper. But I spend about four months working on my own in my own studio set up in in my little flat and it's um yeah it's quite intense but i like it and it i also get to exercise the punk rock in me because you know i see myself as a punk rocker before any other type of rocker so, so you, you do every everything from home everything diy then it's it's all so you've got complete control over everything Yes. Yeah. I mean, I run, I have my own little label. I have a manager who works with me. Um, you know, we have an online store and we sell direct to, to my fan base. And, um, we do, we do, you can get my albums in shops as well, but, um, you know, like right now split is on a pre-order and, and you can get it digitally. It's available now, but the CD will be available next month. The vinyl will be available in February. And, um, you know, it's the way I survive as a musician. It's the way I can carry on making music is the way I operate here. I don't have a label and, you know, I um, I keep things, I try and cut as much corners as possible, you know, and by me working on my own, it's, you know, I haven't got a band to pay. There's yeah. there's no drama, you know, the work just gets done. And, and you know, I, I've, I've had two albums out this year. I've had a live album, I've had a road movie and I've got this album out and I'm, I'm about to start recording my next solo album imminently. So, you know, it, it's a job. Yeah. But just to, just to, um, so the recording of, of, of split, you know, you've just mentioned there, you do it all yourself. It's all done in the flat. Um, like just straight from the off, I just want to say, I think it's a fantastic album. I mean, it's, 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 I've been listening to it all killer, no filler. Um, but for me and anyone else, I think that's been following you like on your social media or anything like that, we'll see. Um, it's really been a bit of a triumph over adversity. Um, you know, I think that you've already mentioned, you know, the split with the Wild Hearts, but then you talk about using your flat and, um, you know, you had a flood. Did you? I did, yeah. It out? yeah. So, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, derailed things. Um, I got hacked as well. Hacked, um, I was going to say. So, yeah, you know, I lost all everything. This is going on. Yeah. Uh, an album like that is fantastic. So, anyway, so tell us more about that that journey. Well, um, well I got hacked in. in march uh an egyptian hacker stole managed to he um he took over my instagram and and pretended to be instagram and it it was so real it was unbelievable and 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 um basically fooled me and managed to get into all my accounts Mm. and um uh, basically 
just took over everything. I lost my Facebook account. Funnily enough, it's been sold to a Saudi Arabian um, dental group. Uh, and I, I thought I recognised you, mate. <laughs> to the state doctor. <laughs> Show me your teeth. Yeah, give us a smile, Padre. Yeah, go on. Oh, Look at them. They're gleaming. God, God. They're gleaming. <laughs> Seriously, yes. Yeah. The, the, the hacker, um, Muhammad, um, I actually managed, I spoke to him. I contacted him. That's how I got my my Twitter account back, and um, I managed to get my Instagram account. He wanted money at first, and I told him to fuck off. And um, <laughs> that yeah. he was just holding you to ransom because what... well, he wanted money. He sold my Facebook page because they wanted the Facebook page because it had the blue badge and had a lot of followers and it was okay. verified. So straight away they set up this Saudi dental group. It's got a blue tick. They kept my picture up there as well. So I'm like this Saudi dental god, and. <laughs> um, uh, uh, and then, yeah, then I started getting tons of people from Saudi Arabia asking for their money back. <laughs> you know. And I was saying, it's nothing to do with me. Oh, but it's, you, it's your your page, it's your picture. And I went, it's, it's still nothing to do with me, mate. It's just like, you know, this these dudes from Egypt, they've set up a Saudi dental group. They've kept my image. They've kept my page. Facebook wouldn't do anything. Couldn't help me. You know, and I said, and and so I've set up a new page and I contacted him, had a conversation with him. I think he was shocked that I wasn't getting angry at him because I, I said, I feel really sorry for you, mate, that you've got to do this. And, you know, he, he lives in Egypt, man, no offence. You know, <laughs> it's not the best, the best of places to live in Cairo, you know, and, and I just I felt really sorry for you that you've got to do this, you know, and, and if I could help you, I'd give you some money and that, you know, and um I, I just said, I'll look out for you on a boat, you know, and then left no, it at that. And all this is <laughs> I, did, I asked him if he was a bird at one point as well, because I, I needed to figure out if he was English or not. So I started drop, dropping some slang in there and he'd go, no, I'm not a bird. I'm a man. <laughs> I went, He's definitely not English then. Yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, it, it, it doesn't surprise me that this has ended up in Saudi Arabia. I mean, I've only been at this two and a half months. Is it, is it two months? Two and a half? I can't even. It's about. Yeah, it's, a good, it's a good couple of months. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's just like I've lived. I've lived in like six or seven countries now, and like this is the place that really personifies the song "Welcome to the Jungle." Right. You know, what are you just, doing in Saudi Arabia? Yeah, if you don't mind me asking, I'm an English teacher. Um, oh, okay. Well, yeah, I'm just. I'm here for the money. <laughs> Like, I, 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 if you would have said you're a dentist, that just would have been. <laughs> I know, I know. DJ has well, left. I, the chat. It just, it, it's like that. It just they they see money as the, as the solution to everything here. Yeah, oh, something's wrong for money. You know, it's like I mean, it, it's you should have seen it. Like when when I was in the in the teachers' room at the, at school the other week, and it got announced that they got the World Cup. We all just sat there, just going off oh, for fuck's sake. So, you know, because you just you know what's going on. Yes, um, but yeah, just yeah, uh, it's all a bit of that, and it? of course. Yeah. So I, I, I mean, I um, so I managed to get all my pages back apart from the Facebook, but it, it put a massive dent. I lost my e email account as well, my main email account, which I could never get back. At this time, you're trying to promote the Kicks album, isn't it? There's, I am. So I had to postpone my live album and a live movie, and then we had to shut down my shop and set up a new shop, and it was. I was really annoyed for a bit, you know, and it was quite upsetting when I realized the extent of the hack. But then, you know, life goes on. You got, you know, you got to you got to take the punches and and you know roll with it, which ends so what I did. And and then so I, I managed to get some of my pages back and we, we kind of started rebuilding, you know, trying to rebuild that fan base again. And and if you remember um social media is my shop window it's how i sell everything yeah, so yeah. Right. you know it, it's really important i know people are saying social media is a bad thing but it can be a good thing for people like me no at the end of the you day it, it's it's free promotion isn't it you know you've, it is. you've got to embrace yeah. it it's a tool i'm an, I'm an, I'm an avid dogger as well so i advertise my wares <laughs> to truck drivers on you know facebook it's brilliant <laughs> <laughs> from my hands you know <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not really a dog i know <laughs> so, oh, we welcome all sorts <laughs> everyone's got to have a hobby you know it's true so um 
And then, then I got everything up and running. And then my flat, there'd been a leak in my flat, and and my flat started sinking. Oh, <laughs> oh, the bath started going like like this, and it was like, what the fuck? And then they came around and said, oh, we're gonna have to strip your flat out and dry it out. And I go, how long is it gonna take? And they go, well, if it's if we're quick, three months. If we're slow, eight months. <laughs> Fuck. So it, it took seven weeks to dry out. I mean, I was out of the flat for 11 weeks in temporary accommodation where I couldn't really record. And this is how Split came about. I literally had about the third of the amount of time I normally have to work on an album. And Split has this vibe about it, which which is completely changed the way I approach writing albums now because I just literally picked up the guitar, wrote these songs in about a week. Wow. And where I normally take ages over the songs. And and that's how Split came about. Because I was forced, my hand was really forced. And I had no time to really work on the album. And people really like it. And and I think I'm I'm going to approach the next album like that. I've, I've already got the taps on, so I'm flooding the flat out again. <laughs> it definitely explains some of the ferocity of, of the new record. Now, am I, am I right in thinking that Split refers to a split of kind of styles in some sense. It's like you talk about a love of sort of pop punk and hardcore punk, and that's where the split occurs. Yeah, it's, it's not, people are thinking, I mean, it, it's quite poignant because of the, the fact that the Wild Arts are split, and um, but it's nothing to do with that. I mean, there's songs on the album about the Wild Arts, but, um, you know, the good times and the bad times. But no, it is literally, I have a pop side, I have a hardcore side, and that's why it's called yeah. Split. Everyone has two I mean, sides. I mean, that's, you know, that, that, that's what intrigues me because I mean, like on your, when you've re-recorded stuff on the, um, on the Lives album, like for example, Lemonade Girl, you know, listening yeah. to the, the Jellies version, um, you know, it's very pop punk, very bouncy, very saccharine, yet the reworking mm. is almost like proper dirty rock and roll, yet they're just completely the same song. Um, yeah, and, um, I mean, like, I'm not, as I got older, my, my sound, my style has got harder and heavier. Um, yeah. There's nothing more tragic than seeing older musicians slowing down and and you know going country. I mean, fuck. <laughs> you know, there's a sticker on the back. Uh, there's a sticker. I'll show you this one second. Um, That's what I'm going to call my autobiography. You, know, you know, my guitar, this guitar, um, Lucy, my main guitar. Yeah. And I forgot. Um, Wilksy, my artist, put a sticker on the back of it, and and it's, I don't know if you can see that. It says, "Only only cunts play country." <laughs> <laughs> I found it yesterday morning. I completely, I, I, I picked it up to change the strings, and I was like, "What's this?" I was like, "Fucking brilliant!" But um, but you know, when all them they, they start they start going acoustic or they start forgetting their blues or jazz, and I fucking hate it. I, if I if, when I as I get older, I just want to go out on fire. You know, I want. I it doesn't mean I'm gonna you know start drinking tons and doing tons of drugs again like i did when i was a kid uh just means my sound i don't want my sound to be watered down and i, I don't there's nothing worse than seeing old musicians looking like old knackered right racehorses you know what i mean and just it's just fuck, fuck that it's awful there's one, thing, there's one thing we talk about quite a lot on this podcast is authenticity and i think like you say when if it's true to you and it's true to what you want to do you're not trying to be something you're not like music no. fans, we we love that we love to know that it's authentic it's coming from a place where it's natural you're not forcing this because this is what i've got to do to get people to listen to it yeah it's 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 a lot a lot of it's to do with with how i um as i get older i want my music to kick me in the ass a bit as well yeah. you know there's a time and place to be mellow i mean i listen to a lot of classical music because i listen to guitar yeah. so much so i don't listen to guitar bands much anymore because of i'm working with guitars so much that the last thing i want to do when i stop recording is listen to more guitars so i i listen to a lot of dance and classical music and and a lot of pop music purely because it rests my ears and i'm hearing something completely different but um uh, for me my my own music i wanted to kick kick my ass i wanted to wake me up when i when i put on split the first song kick down the walls if, if I hear that song, if I was a, a punter hearing that song, it'd make me want to get up and have a dance and right. have a sing along, have you know, fucking have some fun. That's what, and that's what I want. To my do. Music. Yeah. yeah, you know, there's a time and place for for you know, I, I I'm never going to make music which people are going to put on you know to woo someone or you know. Uh, you know <laughs> 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 Worth a go. 
worth a go. Anything's worth a go. Um, so the album's out on vinyl, the album's out on CD, you've got it on Bandcamp, but you 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 don't have it on the streaming sites on Apple Music, on Spotify. What's it the, will, it will be next the month? Oh, okay, yeah. so he's going yeah. up. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, literally right now it's just kind of like a fan thing so people who are fans of the band can get That's it it's cool. not in the shops at the moment it's not on apple or spotify or any of those it's like literally if you're a fan of me you can you can literally get the album now so it's kind of like remember when pledge used to do when you used to pledge and you could get the download straight away yeah. Yeah. way before it was in the shops yeah. it's the same sort of ethic i said i'm not greedy like pledging trying to steal money off people yeah. That, yeah okay that that makes a lot of sense i mean look, spotify and all the streaming sites it's a necessary evil now and we all love our vinyl and everything like that but you know when you're walking down the street headphones in you, you can't I love it i mean i love the fact that you can hear music through through a, a phone now i mean yeah. it, it's, it's you <clears throat> choice is a and is a great thing to be have been able to have the choice to listen to how you want to hear music you know and i know kids i mean it it's not a 70s, 80s or 90s anymore, you know, no. we're, we're 2023 and, and you know, you, you've got to evolve. Um, yeah, but there's, you know, um, I sell hard copies. I sell CDs and vinyl. That's how I make a living. If I was only surviving on digital alone, I'd be asking you if you want fries with that, mate. You know, <laughs> you want chili sauce, bus? <laughs> But the, the the cost of vinyl, though, I mean, that's that's a, a big decision for musicians to make these days, isn't it? Is it going to be worth my while pressing it on vinyl? Um, the cost of vinyl is quite low compared to how much most bands sell vinyl for. Okay, I mean, I'll, I'll be really honest with you. What what even at my my level, what I make on vinyl is worth laying out you know five grand to get like 500 copies of, of vinyl made you know it's it's worth it it's it's just what what i i mean you see the bigger bands how much they're pumping out some of their vinyl yeah i find yeah. it quite disgusting really yeah. you know it's it's you know yeah. there isn't you shouldn't be selling vinyl for a hundred pound a pop and stuff like that and it's crazy it costs it costs them about six pound to make well, how you know, much you know Again, on a sort of level, what I'm just uh, for, for Joey and uh, Bean, mm. we, we were lucky enough to see Therapy play at the back of a pub earlier this year. And oh. that ticket came with the latest album on vinyl. And I think it was it was affordable, it wasn't it? It was very good price. So about 25 yeah. quid all in, wasn't it? Including the ticket. Yeah, that's brilliant. All, all, all in, yeah. So yeah, for yeah, that, that you know, it's, you know, you're, our generation... You know they've they've got they're doing it right still and, and that's great. Um, a, vi a vinyl should be about twenty five quid between yeah. twenty five and thirty pounds because that's yeah. that's what you sell vinyl at. And you can't you can't start selling vinyl at ten quid unless it's like been out for a while because you're 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 you just there's it's the going rate it's the market rate that's what you sell it for but um it, it's worth the it's really expensive to get vinyl made when you can see see how much CDs are. But they're really collectible and, and um, you know, people are buying them, thank God, because if people stop buying vinyl, it just it would be a massive worry. But some bands do take the piss and, you know, you get you get I really hate reissues as well or remastered yeah. stuff. You know, yeah. you're getting people to buy the same album twice. I think it's a massive con. Personally. Yeah, that's, that's, that's 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 jumping on the vinyl bandwagon at the moment, isn't it? It's, it's, that, it's riding a bit of a crest of a wave at the moment. I mean, you go on Discogs. There's copies of your lives record for 150, 160 quid. Actually, it's actually lives, as in past lives. lives. Sorry, lives, yeah, yeah, lives. But yeah, yeah, yeah cr like crazy money. So, Is it, yeah, that, I mean, yeah, because um, I, I only, I only print about ten copies, so they sell out and they become really rare. <laughs> <laughs> when once something sells out and once people can't get hold of it then the price goes yeah so like i'm a collector's dream because there's very few copies of a lot of my albums so they do become very expensive you know it's just um what i should do is is just probably sell 10 copies and hold on to 100 and then slowly sell them on ebay and pretend I'm <laughs> yeah, like yeah, a what, yeah why not you know I think one of the most expensive records i own is a copy of mondo akimbo a go go i found how much was that I I spent I, well if you if you priced it per song it's got to be the most expensive album I've ever bought or EP I've ever bought I think really? I 70 75 quid for it you didn't buy it off a Saudi dentist did you <laughs> <laughs> he had a nice smile the guy that sold it to me sold it. <laughs> but um you know it's collectible lots of people looking for that record 
You know? Yes, yeah, they're, they're all, I mean, Price. I think of some of the albums I've made, because I have made quite a few albums. Some of them are, are, go for a lot of money, you know, and even even some of my solo, solo stuff goes for like stupid money. And I'm just, but you can't get them. They are collectible. So, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not how big the album is. It's how rare it is and how yeah. hard it is to get hold of. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, completely. Um, you were talking about um, the fans, you know, selling to the fans. And I, I, it just reminded me that you got the fans involved in Split. Um, I, you've got like a, a, a choir of kind of, yes. you know, a ragtag choir of uh, scruffy old Herberts in there. Um, tell us some something about that. Well, it, it, it goes back to, I had an album called Robot um, in 2000, and I think it was 15 that came out. And uh, uh, it was a pledge thing to get people to come in the studio with me and spend a day in the studio and sing on the album. And it's, it's, it's actually a really, really good way of getting gang vocals because I can't do gang vocals on my own because it's the same voice over and over and over again. You need different voices and different timings as well to get that that, that crowd. And it's also, um, it's a bit, uh, I, I, the way I, I can call this a job is by having different streams of income. So I have my hot sauce, I have albums, I'd, I'll do the occasional gig and, and having a, a, a like a, gang vocal day is another way of me earning some money as well but it's also people coming into the studio and actually appearing on my album as well so it's 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 a i think it's a really really it's a two-way street i get something and they get something as well and 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 it's really enjoyable and i've done i've done three of these and every time i've done it i've been so shocked at, at how good people can sing and the quality of their voices, you know, you know, like you think they're going to come down and be tone deaf. They are so good. And I get them to do harmonies and stuff like that. It's just, it's like, um, it's absolutely amazing how good people are. Yeah. Um, the energy of the choruses on the new album are fantastic. And yeah, that adds to it. That's all part. Yeah, of it. it does. That when you, when you, uh, a gang vocal is, is, it's, it's like, um, it's they're just they're just priceless, especially in punk rock or rock music. When you when you got the crowd, that power of the crowd, it, it's just it's just something which you know, it's priceless. You need it. It's like sprinkling like gold dust on yeah. on top of you know the music. Off the back of the uh, the pre orders for the record, you're giving away one of your guitars, the Hag. I am. Yeah. yeah. Tell tell us about the decision behind that. Um, it, it's been in my lockup. Because I, I used it on the last album I used it on was um, uh, my album Siege, my solo album Siege. But I used it on Robot, I used it on Blood, and I used it on Siege. And I also used it, I toured with it as well. You know, I, did, I used it on the Renaissance Mentor, and it's in the Renaissance Man video. And it's it's just a brilliant guitar. But it's been in my lockup for almost two years, and it hasn't been doing anything. And I, I, I suppose I could have sold it, but I, ju I just didn't want to sell it. I didn't. I didn't want to be. It's just. Um, uh, I should have sold it, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, no, I think what you're doing is a really cool thing. It's just, it's. It, I couldn't. It's, you know, it's I was like giving records it records and things. It's a tangible yeah. thing that someone can have in their hand. So I was no, also. I, I was giving it, and there's no way <laughs> to give it. you can't sell it. No. I mean, that's just, that's just criminal, you know, and um, I'm a firm, firm believer of passing things on. And so uh, I'm selling less than I used to sell. And, and there's a few reasons why um, uh, the current climate, people just don't have as much money as they, they yeah, had. Um, also, with the Wild Hearts not being up and in the charts and active, I don't have a, a big platform to to bounce off. And with, there's been a lot of negative press around the Wild Hearts as well, which which has had a, a, a knock on effect with with my my solo stuff as well. So I was thinking, they're, they're, you know, as I said before, hard copies, CDs, and vinyls. That's how I make my living. Yeah. Um. I thought, right, I need an incentive to get people to actually buy my album. It's so shit that I need them <laughs> to have an incentive. No, I'm right. So I thought, right, I'm going to give away a guitar. So if you buy my album on vinyl or CD, your name automatically goes in a hat. And on December the 8th, I'll pull a name out and that person wins the hag. And and it's a fantastic guitar. It's not it's not a piece of shit I'm giving away. You know, there's I, I see I see people, you know, they sell stuff on eBay and, and it's just it's crap. 
Yeah. But you know, it belongs to a musician. It belongs to someone who who is who was famous or something. And it, they're selling shit. <laughs> and, and I wanted to give away something which was good. It's got it's got a bare knuckle pickup in it, which and like two hundred quid just yeah. the pickup. And it fucking screams and it looks cool and it plays really nice. And you know, so. You know, you're no, getting... talking yourself out of giving it away now. <laughs> I won't know. I've got much better guitars. You know, they're, they're, I mean, I love Hagstrom's, but, you know, uh, I'm looking at that, my my BB King, Lucille, you know, it's a vintage, you know, Gibson. It, it's it's a better guitar, but it should be. It's about fucking £8,000 more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? but by doing it the way you're doing it, it's going to go to a fan. So at least it's in the right hands. You know what I mean? You could sell it. I hope so. Yeah, I mean... I wouldn't begrudge someone who won it and they needed the money and they just put it straight up on eBay. I mean, that's the way, if they want to roll no like that. I would rather it went to someone who's going to keep it. Yeah. Um, ideally, I'd like it to go to someone who could play it. But um, <laughs> it, it, my guitars look good on walls. Yeah. You know, all my guitars are so heavily customised um, that, you know, um, they look good on the wall. So someone, if they didn't play it, they'll hang it up and go like, Fuck me, that's a great looking guitar, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and there's a story behind it as well. It isn't, you know, a, a cheap piece of shit. And you know, there's a good story. So they but if you if you buy my album on, on CD or vinyl, you get a chance to win the guitar. So. Are you um are you gonna go and tour the album? You're gonna go and play some shows? I am, yes. Um I'm well I got my agents looking to like book me out in April. So we're looking at doing some shows in April. Um and then some in September and maybe a ha like some of the smaller festivals over the summer. But I put my band, my solo band on standby. I said, I've got to go out and play like next year. So hopefully April we'll start doing, you know, a handful of shows and then, you know, throughout the summer and then September. Yeah. The festival circuit is something now that for any touring musician is such a big part of it. So it, and it's it's a way, it, it's, it's a way of getting your music out of people who won't necessarily know you in it. It's an opportunity. You can't, can't knock it now. Yeah, I mean, there's a ton of smaller festivals now. Yeah. So, um, I mean, just it's 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 great. I mean, I I think um, I mean, the problem is there's so many bands now as well, isn't there? I mean, it's yeah. just I've never known known there to be so many bands. It's just like uh, I can't keep up with um, you know, there there was a I was uh, in a classic rock magazine. They yeah, yeah, yeah. they have yeah. a their website has a thing. Is it like video of the week and um. You get to choose. There's like eight eight bands, and they have a, a new single out, and then you you their fans can vote for for which you know whatever band they you know think's got the best single. But every time I've been on there, I've been on there three times. With I've never heard of any of the bands I'm with, and they're all bigger than me, and some of them are really big, and I've never heard of any of them, and and it's just like. Uh, either I'm just like I'm just I'm not paying attention, or you know, there's just too many bands out there. And I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. Been, uh, the opportunity to get a person's music out there is so great. Now it's you know it's a blessing and a curse, isn't it? It's like it's, uh, as much as everyone can do it and get them be heard, it's turned into a, a flood. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I tell you what, I, I do like is is with younger artists and younger bands is is the you know the going viral thing on social media. Yeah, I think it, it, um, people who can play social media, it's a real talent. It's 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 like the great PR people back in the day. Oh, uh, if you and but it, it seems to be um definitely um the realm of the younger artist social media. It's like yeah, something it's, old older yeah. bands don't don't it's grasp. A, it's, it's a bit of a game, isn't it? If you like, you say if you can play it, then you're you're golden. People can can run with it, and you know we we tr we try our best, but it is such a hard thing to 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 get noticed. I suppose is the thing against the fucking every Friday. There's you know, we as as metal fans, every Friday there's probably 60, 70, 80 albums released, you know, and all <laughs> available immediately because they're all on Spotify and it's just it's crazy. They um I mean I, I have a nine year old um son, which is really bizarre. I'm fifty five and I have a, a nine year old boy in the end. <laughs> I, it's great having such a young like kid around me and and i see the things he watches on like youtube and, and stuff like that and so i'm i'm, I'm actually quite tapped in to what like youngsters <laughs> but i mean I, it, it just blows my mind it, it, he's really into this dog called um tucker buzzlin and or buds in he's called he's a, he's a golden retriever and he's worth about 24 million dollars <laughs> and 
<laughs> but just these videos of Tucker and this voiceover and his owner putting on a stupid voice and they're, they're really entertaining, but it's just, it's mental that just <laughs> golden retrievers. That's so rich. Some living. of them are shit. There's a, there's a, like this little kid called Ryan, it's called Ryan's Toy Review and he's worth about maybe 60 million now. He's one, he's what? one of the biggest, one of the biggest names on YouTube, isn't he? And it's, he's shit. Yeah. Yeah, he's rubbish. Yeah. Even even as a kid when he was little, it's like I know much better kids. Mike's <laughs> so famous. No offense, you know, to him, but he's rubbish. Yeah, I, I'd rather see the, the golden retriever. The, at least the golden retriever. <laughs> <got, that's laughs> now, talk, talking okay. about making a fortune online. And now you mentioned it a couple of times. Your hot sauce. Um, mm. How did that come? Like, what's the journey up to to the CJ hot sauce? That that that's purely um it's based on my mum's own hot sauce. So um my mum's from the Seychelles, my dad's West Indian. We we had a lot of you know spice and chili in, in my family growing up. So even from a young age, I always saw my mum, she'd put chili on everything and it was never hot enough for her. So she made her own hot sauce. And then, you know, by the time I was 10, I was putting chili on everything. And I had a solo album called Mabel, which came out, it'll be 10 years like next year. Um uh a chili company approached me and said, do you want to make your own hot sauce? And I said, yeah, I'll go, but I, it has to be my own hot sauce and it has to be based on my mum's recipe. And they said, come in the kitchen and we'll we'll cook it up. And that was like, yeah, back in 2014. And, and, and I've been selling it occasionally ever since. A couple of times a year, I will put it up for sale. And the same company makes the sauces for me. And I've got about eight different types now. So yeah, it reminds me that I've had a few bottles myself and it's like when we were all that crazy time when we were all in lockdown and we we're working from home and no one was going out of the house. It was like the the hot tuna sandwiches that we used to make that were fueled with your hot hot sauce. Um, it's, it's invigorating. It's, it's, it's life giving hot spice. It, you know, um, I don't know if do you all you guys like spicy food or. Yeah, yeah I do. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. more so these days. So I mean, I'm interested, but yeah. It, it does it. I mean, it, it's um, it's a it's a scientific fact that you know the what you know the 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 ingredient in in chili uh, capsicum, I think it's called. Yeah. Um, it, it's an antidepressant. It boosts you know. It's got a lot of vitamin C in it. It boosts your mood. You know, it's it's reputed to keep you young looking, makes you virile. You're yeah. literally <laughs> selling joy in a bottle there. Yeah, but, um, drink it straight from the bottle. Now. Yeah, yeah. I bathe in this stuff. It's great. Uh, I mean, it, it is it is really popular. But I mean, there's a lot of bands have their own hot sauce and they are fucking terrible. It's just a generic hot sauce and they've just stuck their label on it. And I just, again, it's like they're just remastering shit, you know, and yeah. reissuing. A lot, of, a lot of them are just, it's just, it's just spicy. It's got no taste to it. That's, that's, that's the thing. It's like, I mean, I was, I was reading on, um, online in like wikipedia about you guys and it's, it, it, i find it's you, you, you did you spend some time on like military bases in malaysia and europe um yeah i grew up in the army my my, my dad was in the army so i, I grew up in, on bases military bases so i was in germany for eight years and then singapore and malaya so um yeah i mean yeah. I've, I've been I, I lived in southeast asia for 10 years and like the food that the, the the spiciness of the food there, but you've also got the, the multiple layers of taste. Yes, you need taste. You, you, you can't, it yeah, can't just be hot. You've got to yeah. have flavour as well, yeah. You know, there's... So um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've never had anything so hot that I couldn't have been, I haven't been able to taste it. I'm still waiting to have that experience. I'm waiting with glee to have that experience. But, um, you know, no, uh, it is um, hot sauce for me. Is is It's like the spice of life I have. There's very few like dishes I don't put hot sauce on, and I even I used to walk with my own personal hot sauce in restaurants, and just when no one was looking, just <laughs> you know, bring your own bottle. Isn't it? Yeah, um, but I tell you how popular hot sauce is, which which horrifies me. Ed Sheeran has got his own hot sauce. <laughs> you know, sure, you surely that's as mild as it gets, and it just... that's what I, when you look at Ed Sheeran, you don't think of hot sauce; you yeah, think of when you. Marmalade, you know, don't be awesome, you know. Marmalade. <laughs> <laughs> Do your own marmalade, man. There's a market that hasn't been tapped into by the when you're, 
Yeah, but when your music is as insipid as Ed Sheeran, you, you need anything, you know, to give it some kind of fucking body and taste, you know? I just, I was just shocked. Someone sent me a link. He goes, look, Ed Sheeran's got his own hot sauce and, and they're all oranges. <laughs> <laughs> Different shades of orange. It's just like, fuck off. I mean, it's just, so, I mean, it, it, it's, but um, yeah, you can't, if you can't fault hot sauce, yeah. No, fair play. Fair play. I mean, uh, before we um, before we let you go, we, we can't have you on without at least talking a little bit about your history and about the Wild Hearts. And like you said uh, at, the, at the top of the show, the, the good days and the bad days. But surely the the, the biggest thing for you, you must get look back and you, you can never have any regrets about about that part of your life. And, and you know, the great music, the Wild Hearts debut is a classic. You know, and like you said, Ginger is, is resurrecting the Wild Hearts in, or trying to resurrect the Wild Hearts in, in some way, shape or form. I mean, how do you feel about that? Um, I mean, personally, I've, I've mentioned it before. I think we should just draw a line underneath it yeah. and, and move on as solo artists because it's... it's um, I, I don't see the point of putting together the band with just him and three random people who aren't Wild Hearts. The Wild Hearts were always a band and always a group and... There's um we've been around so long that um it's like the members of the band are, are as popular as the band yeah. itself, if you know what I mean. You can't you when you even if me and Ginger aren't getting on, you expect to see me and him on stage, you know, Richie on drums, either Scott on bass or Danny on bass. You know, that's that's the wild hearts. It's the yeah. DNA of the band. It's bigger than the four of us. And it's it's um it's a shame you know but i yeah, um I, I also respect the fact that you know if it wasn't for uh verses i wouldn't be talking to you today true, yeah, yeah that yeah. album spurned many many bands and many many albums and and to this day it's still the best album the band ever made you know, yeah. you know it's, it's, it's an immortal piece of work it really is i you know i have to thank you for that because it's you know I will, put it, I will put it up there with Appetite for Destruction as one of the greatest rock debuts um, out there. No, thank you. There's a vibe to it. I mean, there's a vibe, and 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 it's that. Again, I said band. You know, it's it's a it's it's the band that captures. I know they're Ginger's songs, but you know, it's it's the vibe. It's the band. You know, yeah. that's that is the DNA of the group, and and it's like. You can't. Sometimes you you just got to put your hands up. You know, it's been thirty four years. We tried our hardest. You know, it, it's just like we we got back in in the top ten a couple a couple of years ago. That was a huge achie- achievement for a band like us. And then for it all to go wrong again, and for it to stop again, it's 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 shameful. You know, I felt embarrassed. You know, when when people are going, "Fuck me, you guys have stopped again." It's like at your age, can't you just get your shit together? It's just like it's embarrassing. And I went, "You're right, <laughs> it, it is." So I, I've drawn, I have to draw a line under that part of my life, you know, because I, I can't, I can't put another three years into the wild arts for it to stop again because it will stop again yeah. and it will implode again after thirty-four years of this always happening. Why is it suddenly going to stop? It's not. Yeah. You know, and and the fact is, we're not young anymore. You know, we're all a few years off sixty. It's it's, it's difficult. It's it's diff- I mean, I'm not just talking about bands. So uh, any in any in personal relationship with a group of people, or in if it's just you and another person, sometimes it's great for two or three years or six months, and then you've just got to move on. And it doesn't de- denigrate or devalue that type period of time that you spent friends with someone or in a group with someone. But going back to it. It's never going to be the same, is it? It's like once you no. friendships like friendships like a piece of paper. Once you crumple it up, you can't really get those crinkles back out of it. It's never yeah, the same I mean, again. We, I mean, we've made some amazing music, the Wild Hearts, and and on a good yeah. day, we were a, a world class band, and and there was elements, you know, to 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 the four of us, the way we were on stage, and um, I've always seen the Wild Hearts. To me, it's always been. Richie on drums, myself and Ginger, and either Danny or Scott yeah. on bass. That to me, it looks like the Wild Hearts, and it sounds like the Wild Hearts. There's also a look to the Wild Hearts as well. The way you know, um, it's really important as well. The image of a band. Yeah. Yeah. You can't just, you know, if if you can't just 
pull people in and go out and say you're this band when you don't even look like the band you know what i mean there's there's yeah. a there's a there was a look the wild arts had you know and and as well as a sound and you know but as i said if it wasn't for uh, first as i wouldn't be um here you know today speaking to you and i'm really really respectful of, of that and and you know that album as well it's a brilliant album i mean talking about honey crackers if i can also i mean that you you know you released that album and you you know you, you you released an iconic single which for me is up there with the greats of that particular era i mean sitting at home you know people talk about common people wonderwall etc that's up there it's it's you know, in, in Immortal Song, you supported some pretty big names around that time. You know, did it, it felt like it might have happened a bit too quickly. Um, is that the case? Uh, or um, Well, I got, I was sacked after I recorded my parts for um, PHUQ, the Fuck album and Fishing for Luckies. I was um, sacked from the band. and But very quickly, I had um, four or five, major record deals on the table so um and these were off the demos i did with willie willie dowling which yeah. um one of them was sitting at home on, on that, that demo tape and uh um we we, we signed we, we, i was held in litigation for six months and um warner brothers wouldn't let me out of their deal and in the end i had to buy myself out of the warner's deal and it cost one hundred and forty thousand pounds and oh, sony fuck. sony oh. paid for me they paid it and bought me off warners and um they wouldn't let me go warners they wanted me as a solo artist they wanted me you know to stay there and i didn't want to stay with warners you know and um i'm glad i went over to sony i mean i loved being with warners but sony treated me like a fucking king it was unbelievable um but i don't i, I it's a, such a shame honey crack only made one album i don't think it happened too quickly i just think i think um I think the amount of money that was thrown at that band, I mean, we did some really big tours, high profile tours as well. Yeah. You know, I mean, we supported Alanis Morissette on the Jagged Little Pill tour, which was insane, absolutely insane. And and she was hitting massive then, like yeah. huge. huge. I mean, Taylor Hawkins was a drummer yeah. as yeah. well, you know, and, and Taylor wanted to join Honeycrackers uh, as well at, at one point, but then he got the call off Dave Grohl, you know, Fuck was on that hell. tour. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, he was a massive like Honeycrack fan, Taylor, and um, so was Alanis. That's how we got the tour. You know, um, Alanis saw one of our videos on MTV, and and she had a soft spot for me back then. Yeah, yeah then she went to, went to Spec Savers, and you know, saw the error of her ways. <laughs> <laughs> went to Saudi Arabia and fixed her teeth. <laughs> <laughs> So I've got a question. I was I, I was reading again stuff on the internet, and I found this quite funny. Did you guys walk into the offices of Kerrang because they published a rumor that Danny was going to leave the band, and you smashed up the offending journalist's desk? Uh, see, I was in I was in in the Wild Hearts when they did that. So oh, um, yeah, I wasn't. I mean, I was I was. Um, in Honeycrack at that time. It was a it was a couple of years I was out of the Wild Arts. So I have no idea why they went went in there to do it. I mean it's it clear. Yeah. Yeah, I think they smashed up a couple of computers and stuff like that. But I mean the police weren't involved, so it couldn't have been been that bad. bad. Yeah. I mean yeah, if it was really bad, you know, they would have gone to prison, wouldn't they? That's how that's how things have changed though. You would never see that kind of thing happen now. Never. No. It should be a strongly worded email. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, people get offended by the tiniest little things as well. So you got to yeah. be—I mean—got to be really careful what you say these days because I mean, people are so triggered, and um, you know, you you don't want you don't want to upset people. I find it quite hard to censor myself sometimes, and um, especially when I'm out. Um, my 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 girlfriend's a bit of a hippie, and she, and and, so, and my ex wife as well, who I'm very good friends with, and they're saying like, you just don't, don't be CJ tonight. And what do you mean? Because I like, <laughs> just don't talk about everything like everyone. You think everyone's like you know a, a person from South Park? <laughs> you know, <it's> like... <laughs> no, you fuck, fuck that. You you never change. You always be yourself. You know, it's sometimes yeah, you have to do it. I work in a corporate world, and and mm. this is like my escapism. So no mm. one in that world knows I do this. And some of the things we say on this podcast could potentially offend some of those people, but you've, you've got to, you've got to be able to have a say, you've got to be able to at least express yourself somehow. If you keep it all bottled up, 
it'll end up coming out in the wrong way. Anyway. I, I think I think a lot of it's. I mean, I, I went to school in the seventies, so um, uh, I mean, my son is always checking me, pulling me up. I mean, he's not a nine-year-old, so you can't say that, Dad. Anymore. Yeah, my kids do that. Yeah, I know what that's like. Yeah, and it's yeah. great. I love it when my nine-year-old's telling me off, saying you just you're not not allowed to say that word anymore, and it's just oh, right, I won't say it. Anymore. You little tit. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think I think kids are educating themselves quite well these days, but because they've got the internet, it's all at their fingertips. You know, I, I, it amazes me what my teenage kids come out with sometimes, and I just think I didn't have that that level of education when I was that age, they just got everything now. They're so, very switched on. Yeah. They're really yeah. switched on. But I, I think the way the world is, um, um, they need to be switched on. You, yeah. you can't have clueless kids now. It's, it's scary thinking that there'll be there's kids out there and there's not many of them who are just walking around like, you know, little lambs. You can't be like that. You need, no. you need to, you need to be aware of the world you're living in and, and, and your surroundings. And, and, you know, it's, it's one of the, the best things about having a kid now for me is just seeing how switched on he is and you know he's well aware i mean when when we go to the skate park he you know when he was eight or nine you know he knows those guys are smoking the older kids are smoking joints and stuff like that i would have wouldn't have known that when i was eight no you no know, and what's stuff that, he, what's that funny smell <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i remember i remember in like remember well i don't know how old you guys are but we're all know, early to mid 40s we are so. right so like there was a in 1976 there was a really hot summer and there was oh, a yeah, drought yeah, 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 yeah. Well aware of that. yeah and i remember i remember um playing and there was a an old bomb shelter where i lived in london i was in london at the time for a couple of years and i went in there and there was a bunch of hippies in there all smoking weed and i had no idea what they're doing and they're all like hey man how you doing? i was just this, this little kid you know, about eight or nine in there, and 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 <laughs> I had no idea. And it's years later I realised what they were doing. You know, they were all getting high, and one of them had an acoustic guitar. But they were proper hippies, and and I just I didn't. I thought they were girls. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but um, yeah, and it's always stuck in my mind that you know, um, you know, going into a bomb shelter, seeing like six hippies getting high. You know, in the so summer. Those, of those are the things that stick in your memories. You know. It's... <laughs> <laughs> might write a song about that yeah fucking right Look, before um before we lose before we let you go while you're in it plug the album where everybody can get it where everyone can pre-order the the vinyl the cd merch everything like that go the floor is yours um so well it's, it's easy just go to cjdevilspit.com and that's my online store and you can buy everything there. You can buy my hot sauce, merch, you can buy the album or a lot of my past albums and um, you can get them digitally as well. Or go to my band camp, CJ Wildheart. You know, it's um, I keep it simple. That's it, basically. And it will be in the shops like next year. So you'll be able to get it in the shops as well. So but I mean, uh one of the best things about the way smaller artists work is you can buy direct from the artists. Yeah. Always good to buy direct from the artist, cut out the middleman. Yeah, and what you say about about vinyl, if if you are actually making some money, I mean, that makes it even more important to go and buy it. It's coming straight for you. The money's going in your pocket. It's funding you to do what you do, and and that is at the end of the day, that's why we're all sat here. So, yeah, I, I tell you what, because you, you know my flat, so I had to have my flat rebuilt, and I got into the wrong vinyl because the amount they spent on the vinyl flooring. That's the vinyl I should have got into. <laughs> Everyone needs floors as well, you know. <laughs> right. um, look, thank you so much for coming on. It's been uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's been one of my favourite episodes. To be fair, it's been it's been great fun. Um, yeah, everyone, get on there, order the album, at, at least go on Bandcamp and listen to it. It's going to be on the streaming sites next month. Um, get involved. It's a great album. We're all loving it. So, yeah, man, thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. I'll see you all dogging next week. Yeah, as yeah, the well, car. I'll be park. there. I'll be there. <laughs> yeah. to it. I'll bring. I'll bring a torch. <laughs> um, I'll go out looking for that dentist. For you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you, you have good, good luck with your teeth, mate. <laughs> yeah. Um. So that's it for this week. Uh. Thanks for. Uh. Thanks for tuning in. We we will be back next week with something a little, a little off the uh, off. The beaten track, I suppose, but we'll uh, we'll, we'll get to that. But um, thanks for listening, as usual, and uh, stay metal. We'll see you next week. <laughs>